I want to uh, congratulate Dr. Adams and the organizers of this meeting and uh, talk to you about the Cincinnati experience with treating patients with minimal change chronic pancreatitis with total pancreatectomy and autologous islet cell transplantation. I realize this is somewhat of a controversial topic. So minimal change chronic pancreatitis is poorly understood. One of the first reports commenting on this entity was a report by Walsh in 1992, published in Gut, where he characterized it as having early changes of chronic pancreatitis with subtle histologic findings, normal imaging, and symptoms that ranged from minimal discomfort to severe chronic or relapsing pain. And most importantly, he, he um, stated the morphologic change was out of proportion to the severity of the pain that the patients experienced. The true incidence of this entity is unknown. Um, it's also unclear whether this represents a separate entity altogether or whether it's in the timeline of developing large duct calcific disease. What is known is that patients who have this um, have very disabling abdominal pain, and oftentimes it's, it's refractory to, tradi to traditional medical therapy. Most of these patients undergo management uh, through medical means first. Uh, this includes a judicious use of narcotics. A subset of patients may uh, benefit from nerve blocks, enzyme replacements, like triotide, and if they're, uh, they're active drinkers and, and alcohol is a cause of their problems, then abstinence uh, does help a subset of these patients. Now, despite having morphologic changes or anatomic abnormalities, all of us have taken care of these patients, many of these patients undergo endoscopic sphincterotomies and pancreatic duct stenting and as a means of trying to alleviate their pain. And uh, as uh, can be predicted, you know, these interventions are usually not very helpful. And surprisingly, um, despite having, uh, again, no anatomic abnormalities, many of these patients undergo subtotal resections as a means of trying to alleviate their pain. And uh, not surprisingly, these are usually not effective in managing their abdominal pain. Going back to the article by Walsh, um, he reported on 16 patients. Uh, 12 of these uh, were women, which is uh, what we see in the modern era. Um, all these patients had near normal imaging findings and all eventually required surgery after medical management failed. Um, histologically, 15 of these patients actually did demonstrate changes of, of uh, pancreatitis consisting of periductal fibrosis, ACE nurse cell uh, hyperatrophy, rather, uh, duct dilation, and intralobular inflammation. Um, the changes that he described included um, uh, abnormal ACE lie with vacuolation and, and duct complex formation. All these patients underwent surgery. Twelve initially underwent a partial pancreatectomy, and of, the, of these uh, patients, eight eventually went on to receive a completion pancreatectomy, and four had a one-stage total resection. Um, he reported that nine patients had improvement of pain and or were pain-free. Six had no improvement, and one patient died of other causes. So that was the, really the, the first report that, that kind of um, highlighted the fact that perhaps surgery has a role in, the, in these patients. The problem is how do we diagnose this, uh, this patient population, and, and we've kind of all commented on that uh, yesterday, today. CT scans, traditional imaging modalities are usually not beneficial. In Cincinnati, we kind of use a combination of endoscopic ultrasound, uh, subset undergo ERCP, and pancreatic function testing. We, you heard from the Minnesota group, they tend to utilize uh, secret and enhanced MRCPs, and this is something that uh, we certainly will investigate in Cincinnati as well. In terms of the endoscopic ultrasound uh, support for minimal change pancreatitis, is a report out of Birmingham where they prospectively studied um, hist histologic features in patients with non-calcific chronic pancreatitis with endoscopic ultrasound. Many of these patients uh, had an um, underlying diagnosis of cancer. Um, 42 patients were evaluated. 21 eventually underwent surgery uh, and histology was available. All patients uh, underwent surgery within two months of their endoscopic ultrasound, and a single pathologist was blinded to the EUS results, and a subsequently fibrosis score was calculated. Surgeries in this in the series include patients undergoing Whipple and distal pancreatectomy. Of note, no patients in the series had chronic pancreatitis based on CT findings, and the authors calculated an ROC curve and, and revealed that if they had more than four features of of, uh, 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 of chronic pancreatitis, the sensitivity was uh, just under 91 percent, specificity of 88 percent, and accuracy of 88 percent as well. 
EOS findings in this series uh, included parenchymal findings of uh, foci, stranding, lobulation, and ductal features included dilation, irregular main ducts, side branches, and hyperechoic duct margins. This is a series out of uh, Gainesville where they looked at the combination of, uh, of, of direct pancreatic function testing uh, versus EOS. This is a series of 74 patients with abdominal pain and suspected minimal change chronic pancreatitis all underwent functional testing with secretin. In a subset of 21 patients also underwent endoscopic ultrasound, and the EOS was then interpreted by one of two expert, experts blinded to the results of the secretin stimulation test. Uh, when the secretin stimulation test was used as the gold standard, um, EOS had a maximum sensitivity of 71% when three features were used as a cutoff and a maximum specificity of 92%, uh, but that required six endoscopic ultrasound findings. Minimal change chronic, chronic pancreatitis was excluded with greater than 70% sen sen uh, certainty when less than three features are present. And again, they, they try to calculate the uh, most concordant um, EOS findings, and they found that to be, again, four, but this had a sensitivity of 57 and a specificity of 64%, so less than what was reported by the Birmingham group. And this uh, study out of Cleveland Clinic looked at the concordance of combining EOS and secretin uh, pancreatic function testing in uh, patients suspected of having minimal change chronic pancreatitis. 302 patients completed um, both endoscopic ultrasound and pancreatic function testing, of which 252 were thought to have minimal change chronic pancreatitis. A normal EOS was defined as having less than four criteria, and concordance of endoscopic ultrasound and pancreatic fu uh, function testing was 76%, meaning that these patients had greater than four criteria on EOS and a peak bicarb bicarbonate of less than 80. So in Cincinnati, we've been performing total pancreatectomy and islet autotransplantation in patients who have failed prior decompression or uh, resection procedures and as initial therapy in patients with hereditary syndromes or patients with small duct uh, disease. All of our patients uh, that we performed the operation on presented with refractory abdominal pain, patients who had failed medical management and or had recurrent acute pancreatitis documented by enzyme elevations and had a poor quality of life. Now we utilize, um, as a definition, have, having at least four or more EOS criteria for um, uh, chronic pancreatitis, or if they had less than four, then we wanted them to have at least one major finding, such as honeycomb lobularity or hypochoic foci with shadowing. A subset of these patients also underwent ERCP, and when they, when they did have um, at least four U.S. findings, they, they, they tended to have at least a Cambridge two or three with abnormal side branches. And again, we looked at the Rosemine criteria and re requested that, uh, that they have at least four features of chronic pancreatitis. Over the period of this study, which was 10 years, we evaluated 148 patients and 84 underwent uh, total pancreatectomy for what we termed a minimal change chronic pancreatitis. The average age in this series was uh, just under 37 years. The average body mass index, again, around 25. Uh, the majority of patients in the series, again, were, were female, and we've commented on that um, um, previously. And of note, nine of these patients were diabetics prior to surgery, although they required a minimal insulin. The etiology of, of these patients was idiopathic uh, in 58. There was a known genetic cause in 14. Two of these were hereditary, and the remainder had a CFTR or spink mutation. Uh, eight patients had a uh, diagnosis of divisum, and four were, were, uh, had a history of, of chronic alcohol use. Um, the average operative time was just under nine hours. The estimated blood loss was uh, just un under 600 cc's and we're able to isolate about 6,300 aisle equivalents per, per body weight uh, for these patients. Um, in terms of the perioperative results, the average length of stay was around two weeks. Major complications included uh, bleeding postoperatively, two cases of pearl vein thrombosis, one case of ARDS, and eight patients with intra-abdominal abscesses requiring percutaneous intervention. Our 30-day readmission rate was 30%, and the reasons for readmission in included infectious causes, abdominal pain not controlled with their uh, medical management, uh, five cases of dehydration, two glycemic control, and one patient, unfortunately, developed a pulmonary embolism. In terms of narcotic use, preoperatively, the patients required 161 morphine equivalents uh, per day, and at discharge, they were discharged with 130 morphine equivalents. 
And at six-month follow-up, this decreased to 53 morphine equivalents per day. Most recent follow-up, 59 patients were narcotic independents um, at, uh, at follow-up. In terms of insulin requirement, uh, the average insulin requirement preoperatively was one unit per day. At discharge, they're uh, discharging the average with 17 units per day, and at, at six months, this decreased to 13. And again, in most recent follow-up, 66% required less than 20 insulin, uh, units of insulin per day, and 37% were insulin independent. We, uh, as other groups have done, looked at the quality of life uh, uh, utilizing an SF36 and found improvement in all subsets measured, including the improvement in health one year after surgery. And also have looked at a subset of patients with greater than five years follow-up and have found, similar to the Minnesota group, that the uh, quality of life is durable and lasting more than five years, as well as the improvement in health one year uh, compared to one year before surgery. So in conclusion, um, TPIAT is a viable treatment option for minimal change chronic pancreatitis. It does provide stable glycemic control, reduce abdominal pain, return to daily activities, and durable quality of life metric. And I think, you know, the, the real question, um, which is controversial, is in how do you define this group of patients and, um, you know, what's a threshold for doing surgery? Happy to take questions. Thank you.